Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about regulations of cryptocurrency. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also important from the perspective of GSP in paper 3. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all we will talk about why news, then we will talk about what are cryptocurrencies basically, then we will talk about India's stand on cryptocurrency, where does India stand. We will talk about the law on cryptocurrency. We will also talk about the need for regulation. Why do cryptocurrencies need to be regulated in one of the biggest economies of the world? We will talk about the advantages, disadvantages. And in the midst of the segment, I am going to ask you a pre-based question for which if you know the answer, kindly comment in the comment segment. So if we talk about why news, the government of India is a little bit closer to have a blanket ban on private cryptocurrencies. And if we talk about what has been the government fearing is that the government does not consider cryptocurrencies a legal tender and they are mostly very volatile and are used for illicit means. This is the government's stand basically. So the government has introduced a bill by the name of cryptocurrencies and regulation of official digital cryptocurrency bill 2021 during the budget session. We will discuss about that. This may become a law soon. But if we talk about what are cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies are basically currencies which work on cryptography, through cryptography and it is a digital system used as a medium of exchange which has a unit which is basically complex digital numbers. And as we all know, it uses cryptography and blockchain technology. What is blockchain technology basically? Now blockchain technology are verified and they are decentralized in nature. It's a data structure and this could be transmitted to different modes and mediums. If we talk about what is blockchain technology, we can help ourselves with the help of this particular diagram. You can see, now here A wants to send money to B. This is a hypothetical situation. So what does A do? It tries to send money through internet, through blockchain technology and a block gets created. Now this block has an information and it is encrypted in nature. That means this information has been locked. And once it has been locked, it will get broadcasted to every party that is connected through that network. After that, the network will after the network finally approves the transaction, it validates the transaction, the block will be added to the already existing chain of blocks and now this block, this particular chain, it cannot be distorted, it cannot be tampered with, right? And then what will happen? The transaction will be complete and hence this, this is not subject to duplication or even this information will always be stored as it is. So this is the beauty of blockchain technology. If we talk about India's stand on cryptocurrencies, here I have written Bitcoin, but I'm not talking about Bitcoin, but other cryptocurrencies as well. In the comment segment, please tell me what are the different cryptocurrencies. And of course, if we talk about one of the very famous cryptocurrencies by the help of uh, from Facebook, it is known by the name of Libra. Alright, remember this, this could be asked in your prelims exam. Libra. Alright, so if we talk about India's stand on cryptocurrency, it has been a little bit negative. In the sense, the government doesn't consider it as a, it as a legal tender. And since the year 2013, the government has been trying to basically warn the investors that please do not invest in this particular currency because it is not based on any kind of goods or any underlying asset but it is based on just and just speculation that is it that is what it is based on and hence it will create an investment bubble investment bubble means if like you speculate in stocks if you speculate a lot in some kind of asset, what will happen? It will create an investment bubble. More and more people will invest in them because they are expecting it to give them a good gain after a period of time. So because it is not, it is not having any kind of legal backing 
or it is not actually backed by some kind of a set underlying a set what will happen it will be prone to it will be prone to first of all hacking maybe hacking could be there and secondly that if in case of any grievances happen an aggrieved party cannot go to any court of law in india in order to get his investments back his or her investments back so this is the first warning and this was given in the year 2013 then what happened in the year 2018 only the rbi has it had circulated a circular to the different banks asking them not to trade or not to give services when it comes to cryptocurrencies now cryptocurrencies services include having any kind of account for them or accepting them as a collateral so that is what rbi did it actually banned all the all the different banks in the country to not accept them any kind as a collateral for any kind of loan or even trade or service in them not accept them basically after that what happened the supreme court of india it quashed the directives issued by the central bank of india and then after that what happened a petition went to the supreme court and asked the supreme court that there could be some kind of smart regulation and an, an outright ban is not acceptable because many of the big big, big economies such as the usa as well they are trading they are actually accepting cryptocurrencies like bitcoin all right so that is what has happened and in the year 2018 19 a committee was a government committee was formulated and it said that we should outrightly ban cryptocurrencies the private cryptocurrencies and we should have our own central bank backed digital currency that means cbdc rbi backed digital currency which will have an equal value as the fiat money has if we talk about the indian economy that is what the government said and the committee also said that if anyone trades in private cryptocurrencies they would be subject to penalties up to rupees 25 crore or up an imprisonment from 1 to up till up to 10 years so that has been the entire recommendation by this committee and this was not approved of course so if we talk about the new batch this new batch has begun in the jaipur branch of drishti ias if you want to join an offline batch in hindi as well as english medium you can go there all right and you can contact on the given number in the drishti ias website so if we talk about law on cryptocurrency the go the government is saying that we need to formulate a law in order to regulate and smartly regulate the usage and trade in cryptocurrencies in order to safeguard the interest of investor and as uh, and the entire economy as a whole so what does this law say you can write it down or take a screenshot if you want to the law will create a facilitative framework for creation of the official digital currency to be issued by the rbi and to prohibit all private cryptocurrencies in india however it allows for certain exceptions to promote the underlying technology of cryptocurrency and its uses if we talk about the first one the first portion says to a facilitative framework so that the cryptocurrencies which are sovereign backed that means of course if just forget about everything just concentrate that a piece of paper will not have a value until and unless it is widely accepted now that piece of paper if it comes under the government regulation and if it comes under it has a backing of the sovereign that means the state what will happen it will be widely accepted and because of that once it will be widely accepted that is why its value will be considered as money that is what is happening what has happened in demonetization when rupees 500 and 1000 notes were banned right if you must remember in the year 2016 when it was banned what happened it stopped being a legal tender the government outrightly it did pull off 
its consent that yes, this paper has a legal backing. What happened? So similarly, until and unless a centrally banked digital currency has sovereign validation, it will not be accepted in terms of trade. That is what has happened when it comes to paper money. And similar provisions are being accepted, are being given for digital currencies as well. And also it says that it will prohibit all private cryptocurrencies in India. And it will only entertain the underlying technology and its uses, such as blockchain technology and its uses. Now, blockchain technology cannot not only be used for cryptocurrencies, but for banking as well and for the uh, voting system as well. I also discussed that the Election Commission of India is actually considering using blockchain technology for voting through EVMs. All right. So that has, that is what is happening. Now, why do we even need regulation? First, because cryptocurrencies have become a hub, a medium in order to do, in order to do all the kind of black money to be submitted in the form of money laundering. First is that. So money laundering and then anti-terrorism. Many a times it has happened and the government has seen that these kind of activities can lead to terrorist activities because their terrorism would be financed by something that is uh, that is away or outside the ambit of the state government because they do not have any kind of regulation so the government wouldn't be able to know how much investment has been done in cryptocurrencies and that could be later turned from black to white from where the from the countries where they accept cryptocurrencies that is the second thing investment bubble because the value of cryptocurrencies it has only the value because of the speculation and not any kind of underlying asset that when it that is when it creates an investment bubble and once it creates an investment bubble the risk, the greater the investment bubble, the, rate, uh, the higher will be the uh, risk. So, in order to safeguard the interest of the entire market, that is happening. Because what is what can we see here? The currencies, the cryptocurrencies are not an asset. They are not even a legal tender. So, they cannot be regulated neither under RBI or neither under or nor under SEBI. So, neither, no, uh, neither RBI nor SEBI can regulate cryptocurrency. That is why we need some kind of law for it, right? Moving on, if we talk about the advantages, why, what will be the advantages when a law comes into being? When we talk about cryptocurrencies, first is more awareness, of course. If the government has CBDC, it will definitely generate more awareness towards digital currency or cryptocurrencies. So that is the first reason, that is, sorry, that is the first advantage. Once it creates more awareness, then it will have a demand when different platforms will start accepting it as a legal tender, it will generate demand and hence it will be easier to generate supply in order to meet the demand. Second is legal backing. So in any kind of grievance or any kind of scam, there will be a legal backing available according to the provisions. It will also prevent hacks. In the year 2016, several hacks happened when it came to cryptocurrency trading. So this would also be mitigated if non-existent, at least mitigated if we can't expect to push it away and push to digital economy. We all know that the current government wants to push digital economy, this agenda forward and forward every year. So this will be a big push to that as well, right? Moving on, if we talk about your preparation for civil services examination, you can, you can definitely vouch, we can definitely vouch you an integrated course for prelims and mains through Drishti IS pen drive course. If you want to know more about it, you can call on the given number. Moving on, if we talk about the disadvantage, first disadvantage is speculative in nature. Cryptocurrencies 
if they do not have any kind of underlying asset they will definitely work in work for speculative purposes and if we talk about not only cbdc's but different cryptocurrencies different cryptocurrencies may also get the similar advertisement as cbdc and once they become that people would want to earn more and more not just through cbdc's but also through other private invest private cryptocurrencies and they might invest through fpis in different countries so that is the first disadvantage second loopholes exploitation because we are having a law for cryptocurrencies for the first time ever we are going to have some kind of loopholes which may be exploitative in nature so second disadvantage is that that even though we have a law there may be existing some loopholes which can be exploited and hence it will defeat the purpose of it and higher the stakes involved the higher will be the risk right so we cannot we cannot expect the entire situation to go very smoothly right now we are just on a trial and error basis but the government needs to keep this in mind that once we have some kind of law we cannot and cannot go do away with it being a static law right we need many amendments because the technology is ever changing in nature and more the technology will be the will be ever changing in nature the law needs to be amendable that many times right so and before we leave before we leave this segment i would like to tell you that cbdc's under which act the rbi is allowed to issue cbdc's under the rbi act 1934 keep that in mind because this could be asked in your prelims exam all right so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching